For the span of five hours, Everybody's Gone to the Rapture transported me to one of the most detailed, fully realized worlds I've ever experienced in a video game. It builds a potent sense of place, populates it with rich characters, and delivers a fantastic mystery that culminates in a powerful payoff. We'll look at the figures, tighten up the data, and resubmit. Your core idea is sound, you just got the numbers slightly wrong. From the beginning, Rapture utilizes a slew of effective storytelling techniques to convey its intriguing, affecting tale of a quiet English village whose inhabitants suddenly begin to disappear into swirls of light. Well-written audio diaries, fantastic character interactions, and environmental storytelling clues all come together to build a great, mysterious tale. You saw the opportunity, you ran the numbers, even if they can't see it. I'm proud of you. I really loved how my theories regarding the mystery kept evolving throughout my playthrough. I continually oscillated between hypothesizing that the events were rooted in religious, alien, or man-made reasons. It felt just as great when a turn of events proved me wrong as it did when one proved me right. Rapture's cast enters and exits the story in the same way characters do in a skillfully directed ensemble movie. It's probably that father, Jeremy, spreading it around while he tries to bully everyone into donations for the summer fate. It seems very quiet in the village, actually, Wendy. Not much bullying to be done. Oh, Father, I didn't know you were here. Clearly. I really appreciated the way it trusted me to find bits and pieces of a person's life out of order and figure out how they all fit together without holding my hand. Throughout the five hours, I was introduced to six major characters, each of whom had really interesting backstories that felt fulfilling to slowly gain an understanding of. Discovering the arc of how a God-fearing priest comes to term with his creator in the face of such unexplainable events led to some really powerful, memorable character moments. I'm sure when the sun comes up, everything will seem better. All of this is heightened by a fantastic score, which punctuates the bigger moments with booming, hymnal music, which in a world completely devoid of human life ends up taking on a life of its own. <laughs> Actual game mechanics are about as sparse as they come. Aside from moving around the world and finding points of interest, the only means of interaction in Rapture are a single button that opens doors and turns on radios, and some slightly obtuse tilt functionality. Sadly, the latter seems a bit shoehorned. Rapture doesn't do a great job of cluing you in on what to do in these situations, and it took me a few hours to actually wrap my head around this form of interaction. Exploration is the real gameplay, and so it's valuable that this world is open right from the start. If you want, you could rush straight towards the finale and reach the conclusion without piecing together its story. Well, maybe rush isn't quite the right word, because movement speed is Rapture's most prominent problem. Your character walks at an achingly slow pace. The movement speed is slower than nearly any first-person game in recent memory. There is an ability to sprint slightly faster, but it's hidden behind the need to hold R2 for 7 seconds before your character begins to speed up. At no point does the game tell you this, which makes the design decision flabbergasting. Everybody's Gone to the Rapture excels at building a dense world, evocative tone, and rich cast of characters. Its five hours are filled with some really amazing exploration, discovery, and memorable moments. Piecing together its web of heartbreak, loss, and ultimate revelation is a great experience. For more on Everybody's Gone to the Rapture, you're already in the right place, IGN. If you can hear this, you need to shut down the optical array. It's using the observatory as a conduit to reach us, and it started spreading its range beyond the valley.